James Strain and I met some 20 plus years ago down on West 30th Street in one of those bombed out music rehearsal studios that all the musicians in those days knew. Those places were notoriously run down. Equipment, half of it didn't work. Um, places were real fire traps. We were auditioning bass players at the time and hadn't had that much luck. James came in at his allotted time and walked into the studio with his sort of James Strain look and cool. And as he walked across the room to set up and plug in, the musicians in the studio kind of looked at each other and without even saying anything, we all kind of knew, if this guy can play, he's got the gig. <laughs> it turns out James really could play really well. He was a rock solid in the pocket R&B player. We found out that he was conversant. He was aware of all the bands that we liked and were sort of in the same league with in terms of style and the kind of blues, urban kind of sound that we were after. In anticipation of the player not working out, we would usually schedule only a half hour for auditions so we could kindly send the player on their way. After 10 minutes, you know whether or not it's gonna work. But with James, it was so much fun after a half hour, we blew right through the audition time and played for a full hour. I've performed live more with James. I've recorded more tracks with James and I've rehearsed more with James than any other of the know, hundreds of players that I professionally worked with over the years.
Well, that was a good one too. Yeah. I don't know, James. It seems like it's just like you know, we haven't played in a while, so then it takes us a few takes to get it. But then yeah. once we get it, all of a sudden it's like we got it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded good, man. It sounded fine. Sounds good, man. Always did. <laughs>